It is a wonderful, glorious thing to be in the house of the Lord. Amen? Amen. And to know that He is going to touch our hearts and He is going to lead us and guide us in every way. And He's going to speak to us. And if we listen, if we have ears to hear, we're going to receive what He has for us. And it's going to bless our lives. Amen? Amen. We are going to uh, have a little message this morning that is sort of basic, but sometimes we need to get back to the basics. Amen? Amen. And we're going to talk about the gospel of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And we're going to do it with this topic. Now, this is the condemnation. Uh, I hear people all the time tell me that a God of love would never send anyone to hell. And I say, you are correct. But we choose eternity for ourselves while we're here in this life. Uh, he gives us the option. He gives us the, the opportunity. He has made provision for us. But many times it's as if we shake our fist in his face and tell him, I don't want it. So we have to come to him and understand that there is a choice to make, a choice to be made, and it is up to each individual uh, to make that choice. So through the ages, through the ages of time, there have been many, many heresies, many, many thoughts, and many, many beliefs, and many things that are untrue. Uh, and still today, you can hear people tell you that there is no hell, but although Jesus spoke of hell uh, more than he did of heaven. We can hear people say that, uh, like I said earlier, earlier that a, a, a loving God would not send people to hell. Uh, so they feel like God is not going to send anyone to hell, which is true because you're going to send yourself to hell if you reject what he has for you. So there are many, many thoughts out there. But, but listen to this. This is what's so scary to me. 52% of evangelicals, that's us, say everyone sins a little bit. You hear me? Everyone sins a little bit, but everybody has good by nature in them. The Bible says that's not true. The Bible says our nature is sinful. There's nothing really within us that leads us to good except our relationship with Almighty God. 78% of evangelicals believe Jesus is the first and greatest being created by God. Although God said that he always was, he is, and he always will be. He is not created, he is God. Amen? Amen. 59% of U.S. adults believe that the Holy Spirit is not a person of the Trinity, but some force in life. I guess it's like Star Wars, you know? Uh, <laughs> may the force be with you, you know? Uh, may, may the Holy Spirit be with you, yeah, which is true, but it's not a force. It is, it is God himself coming to us in that form. So there are many heresies, many beliefs, many departures from the truth back through the ages and even today. We could have gone over quite a few of those, uh, but I chose to just mention those few little figures there. So today I want us to examine the real gospel, the real gospel of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And really, when we say that, it is the fact that Jesus Christ came to this earth, was born of a virgin, that lived a sinless life, that died on the cross for my sin and your sin, was raised the third day, that gives us assurance of eternal life if we accept what God has done for us. And he's sitting at the right hand of God, interceding for us, waiting for that time when God says, it's time, go and get my children and bring them home. Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen? That's the gospel message. And we're going to look at it. I guess we could just go home now, too. <laughs> <laughs> but let's just explore our passage for today. Okay? But here's a thought. Just a thought, Brother, brother uh, Antoine. Brother Antoine likes that, just a thought. I don't say it as much as I used to. The gospel of the cross and the empty tomb offers us an opportunity and a privilege to be able to have eternal life. Amen? Without that, where would we be? How, what hope would we have? <clears throat> the Bible says that we all sin, we all fall short of the glory of God. And the wages of that sin, the, the payment, the result of that sin is a separation from a holy God, and we know that we can't come into his presence with sin upon us. 
So the gospel calls people to come out of the darkness of evil and into the light. Why do we not want to, why do those that do evil not want to bring it into the light? Because people see it, you know? People that, people that want to do bad things don't like for other people to see it. They like for it to be done in darkness. Amen? Amen. The Bible proclaims Jesus as the only Son of God. You remember, I believe it was Friday, it was a week ago, when we had Good Friday. We said there were three crosses. Amen? There was two destinies, but there was only one way. Jesus said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Amen. This proclamation asserts that he is the truth. And all others that come against him are liars. John 17, 17 says that God's word is the truth. So, some say there's no hell. I fear for them. Some says there's no heaven. Some says everybody's going to heaven. And others say other things. But the word of God is true. So let's look at God's word this morning and see what he says about that. It's not really important what I say. Amen? Amen. According to what God says. Right. Now if I repeat what God says, that's a good thing. Amen. If I don't repeat what he says, that's a bad thing. And as Moses, and we'll look at this in just a moment, lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up. That whoever, whoever, who is that? Whoever, that's every one of us, but the ones that will do it. Whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world. But that the world through him, that's the key, through Jesus Christ, might be saved. He who believes in him, he, he who believes what God has done for us through our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ is not condemned. Did you hear that? Is not condemned. But he who does not believe is condemned already. They condemn themselves. Because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. And here it is. Verse 19. And this is the condemnation. This is the condemnation. That the light, Jesus Christ, our only hope, has come into the world. And men and women, mankind, loved darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. For everyone practicing evil hates the light and does not come to the light, lest their deeds should be exposed. Have you ever gone into a, a, a real dark room? I know we, we still got another verse, but this just came to me. Have you ever gone into a real dark room in a deserted place and flip the light on? All kinds of, we call them scoundrels. <laughs> All kinds of people that we're afraid of, that some people are afraid of. They go every which way because the light has exposed them. Amen? Amen. I used to play in a barn outside of Copper. And I would go into that barn and go up in the loft. And I see all kinds of scoundrels up there. Of course, I was a little boy and wasn't too smart. And I wasn't scared of them. Although they were scared of me because they were, they were running. Verse 21. But he who does the truth, those who do the truth come to the light that their deeds may be clearly seen that they have been done in God. We'll talk about that also in a, in a moment. But I want us to also look at this passage that, that, it, that it made reference to in verse 14 uh, about the story of Moses. <laughs> Listen to this from Numbers 21, 4 through 9. Then they journeyed from Mount Hor. By the way of the Red Sea to go around the land of Edom. And the soul of the people became very discouraged on the way. 
And the people spoke against God and against Moses. Why have you brought us up out of Egypt? Where they, they screamed out to God to, to deliver them from. Why have you done what we asked you to do? To die in the wilderness. For there is no food and no water. And our soul loathes this worthless bread. So the Lord sent fiery serpents among the people. Maybe he needs to do that again today. So the Lord sent fiery serpents among the people, and they bit the people, and many of the people of Israel died. Therefore the people came to Moses and said, We have sinned, for we have spoken against the Lord and against you. Pray to the Lord that he take away the serpents from us. So Moses prayed for the people, and the Lord said to Moses, Make a fiery serpent. Set it on a pole, and it shall be that everyone who is bitten when he looks at it shall live. So Moses made a bronze serpent, put it on a pole, so it was. <coughs> if a serpent had bitten anyone when they looked at the bronze serpent, they lived. Amen? Amen? I want us to just think about two thoughts today. Uh, we're not going to be any quicker. Amen? If we got six or we got two or we got one, we still gonna fill up the time, whatever that time is. You know? People have told me, remember, short and sweet. You know what I tell them? I'm gonna say what God gives me and I'm gonna shut up. <laughs> not before and not after. You get in trouble if you if you shut up before you say what God gives you. And if you speak more than he gives you, guess what? You get in trouble for that too. So the first thing is this God's great love. God's great love. I want you to do something with me. And you're not going to be graded on this. And if you don't want people to see you, you can put your mask back on or you can leave it on. They won't know whether you're doing it or not. I want you to say that verse with me. John 3, 16. Amen? For it should be on the screen. Yes, it is on the screen. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him not perish but have everlasting life. Who? God. God so loved the world. What did he do? He gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. I was in a, a witnessing training <coughs> session one time years ago and I was told that a man in Florida that was illiterate, he couldn't read or write but he took and, and memorized John 3, 16 and led hundreds of people to the Lord. Amen? Amen. For it tells the story, doesn't it? Of God that loved us so much that he gave his only son that we might have eternal life. That's something that nobody really should be able to deny. Listen, that one verse is a summary a summary of the gospel message of Jesus Christ that we mentioned a while ago, that he came as a virgin, lived sinless life, died for our sins, rose the third day, sitting at the right hand of God, coming again to receive us to himself. The Bible says, where he is, we shall be also. And it is a starting point, a starting point for people to understand what eternity really is. Amen? Amen. So there is an eternity waiting for every person that's ever lived. There's going to be some surprises. Amen? Amen? The people that say there is no eternity when you die, you're dead and gone and nothing happens. There's going to be some surprises. So, there is an eternity waiting every person that's lived. The choice of where we spend eternity is up to each and every individual. The choice where we spend eternity is up to each and every individual. It's not some scale that I used to think about when I was a little boy. That if I put enough good things over here and weighed it down just low enough to get it. To, and and I, I'll be honest with you, I think sometimes, I didn't think about this, but I think it was back in my mind. I got to do some good things because of those bad things I did. You know, it would come down a little low enough to raise it up with the scale. That's not the way it is. I have to accept what God has done for me through, his, through my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. He made provision for this through the gospel message of Jesus Christ. 
And it says this that we read a few moments ago. This is the condemnation. That God did not send Jesus into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world. Amen? Amen. So what does that mean, Brother Phil? What are you talking about, about this condemnation? What this means is what we read. The light, Jesus Christ, has come into a world of darkness. Do you believe we're in a world of darkness? If you don't, watch the news sometime. Many of you probably don't watch the news anymore because most of what you see is darkness. That's right. The light, Jesus Christ, was sent into an evil world. Look back through the Bible and see all the times that God had to bring judgment upon the world and upon his own people, the Israelites, over and over. Darkness filled the world, the evil that comes around us. And, and by the way, we, we mention sometimes, if you ask everybody in this country if they believed in angels, reckon what percentage would say yes? What percentage do you think? 95. 95%? 85%? 80? 90? 94 and a half like our... Vaccine disposal. <laughs> but think about this. If you ask people, how many of you believe in demons? Read what the percentage would be. Read what it would be. 30, 40, 10, 20. 10, 20. But demons are what? Angels. They're angels. Fallen angels. Along with Satan, the world system of evil is all around us. And we don't fight against principalities and powers. We fight against, we don't fight against flesh and blood. We fight against the principalities and powers that are around us. And it's difficult because it's like COVID. You don't really see it all the time. And it sneaks up on you. And there it is, the evil that's around us. My heart goes out to young folks because they live in a different world than I lived in. Yep. Mm -hmm. I talked to a man on the phone this morning. I got a call. One of my longtime friends <coughs> died at 4.30 this morning. And his son that I hadn't seen in probably 40 years, 30 or 40 years, got on the phone and said, Brother Phil, I, I, I work with the mentally disturbed. And I find that this world, now this fellow's probably 50 years old. This world is different than when I came along. People are troubled. They're hurting. And I said, yes, sir, Tony, they are. There's an eternity awaiting us. God has made provision for us. The light of the world has come in to shine upon the darkness. But the Bible says there are two choices that are made. Some choose to stay in the darkness, in the evil. Amen? Mm -hmm. They don't want anything to do with anything that we say about the light of the glory of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. But thank God, others choose to come out of the darkness into the glorious light of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. It's your choice where you spend eternity. It's your choice where you spend eternity. It's not mine for you. It's mine for me. God's great love gives us a chance. Amen? Amen. And listen, it does not matter how far you've gone the wrong way, you can come back just like that. Amen. Snap up a finger. You can come back into the glorious light if you were in it to start with, and if not, you can come into that glorious light. We just had Easter. Not long before that, we had Christmas. The incarnation of Jesus, God with us, and the empty tomb after the crucifixion shows us his great love for us. 
Amen? Amen. Think about this. Who would you die for? Who would you die for? Now, when I was young, you hear me? When I was young, I may not have died of anybody, you know? But once you get a little wisdom to you, and once you get a little bit of age to you, you, you think differently. But who would you die for? Would you die for a stranger? Would you die for someone that's in prison awaiting an execution and they had murdered 15 people? Would you die for them? Would you give your life for that person? This great love of God says that although, and we'll look at a verse in a moment, although he knew how rebellious we would be, he still died for us. Amen? Amen. That's his great love. God's love is unconditional. No matter who you are, no matter what you have done, he still loves you. His invitation of eternity is there for everyone. Amen? Amen. It's there for everyone. But some prefer to stay in darkness under Satan's control. Others come to the light. God's word tells us this. God is love. Amen? Amen? It's not that God wants to show his love to you, although he does. God is love. In John, 1 John 4, 8, nothing can separate us from the love of God that's in Christ Jesus. That's in Romans 8. And God demonstrated his great love for us, even knowing we would be sinners. By sending Jesus to die for us in Romans 5, 8. What manner of love, the Bible says, he has bestowed upon us that we should be called children of God. Amen? Amen. Children of God. The Bible says you once were no people at all, but now God says you're my people. Amen? Amen. Amen. God's gift of eternal life by his grace and great love must be accepted by our faith. We must trust what he's done for us through our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. God's offer of eternal life actually starts the moment we accept what he's done for us. He gives us abundant life. He gives us peace. He gives us hope. He gives us uh, new goals, new visions, new eternity. He gives us peace. He gives us comfort. Do you need any of those today? Do you? Here's the second thing, and the last thing. And it is what we've been talking about, light or darkness. It's your choice. The Bible says that this is the condemnation. This is the condemnation. The light of God, the glory of God, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ has come to the world to shine His light into the darkness of evil and sin, but many prefer to stay in the darkness. But praise God, some come out of the darkness into the light. John explains it well for us like this in 1 John 1, 5 through 9. He says this, This is the message which we have heard from him and declare to you that God is light, and in him is no darkness or evil at all. If we say that we have fellowship with him, with God, and walk or live in darkness and evil, we lie and do not practice the truth. But if we walk, if we live in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another. And the blood of Jesus Christ his Son cleanses us from all manners of evil. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. By the way, I think I've told you this before, but I was doing a, a course one time called Master Life. Some of you have taken it here. I taught it years ago. And a man in that class told, told us I was saved when I was 32 years old, and I have not sinned since then. 
<laughs> and his wife said, you're a liar. <laughs> and I thought this class might be over now. <laughs> Some people think that the sins or the life that they live is not filled with sin. But the Bible says different. Amen? Amen. And the Bible says this, and it gives us a good hope. If we confess our sins, if we agree with God that we're sinners because we have to, because He already knows it, He is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Amen? Amen. Furthermore, God's Word says this in Matthew 4, 16. The people who sat in darkness have seen a great light. Now listen. God's Word and the hope that's in it has been proclaimed to all of us. Amen? Amen. But we still choose sometimes to sit in darkness. That same verse says Jesus proclaimed that he was the light of the world, the hope. The light shone in the darkness, but the darkness did not comprehend it. John 8, 12. And that verse goes on to say, He who follows me, Jesus said, He who follows me shall not walk in darkness, shall not live according to evil. The God of this age has blinded their eyes, lest the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ should shine on them. Shameful, isn't it? It's right there for them. Right there for many, but they choose to reject it. When Peter says you should proclaim the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. But think about this. Think about this. One day, one day, the Bible says in Revelation 21, 23, the city had no need of the sun or the moon for the glory of God illuminated it. The Lamb is its light. Amen? God's goal for everyone is not condemnation, but salvation. Right believing and right living belong together. Amen? If you believe, what God says, then you ought to live by what God says. Mm -hmm. If you are brought into the light, then live in the light. Why? Jesus answers that for us in Matthew 5, 14 through 16. He says this, You, us, are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hidden, nor do they light a lamp and put it under a basket, but on a lamp stand and it gives light to all who are in the house. What is he saying? He's saying that we, as children of God, are extensions of his ministry. Amen? Amen. He went back to heaven. He sits at the right hand of God, interceding for us to come again one day and receive us. But until that time, we are to shine the light that he has shown upon us. Verse 16, let your light so shine before men, before others, that they may see your good works and glorify your Father who is in heaven. Never fail. <laughs> we bring out emergencies in our area, I believe. We don't really, but we pray for them. Amen? Amen. Father, we pray for the siren. We don't know what the situation is, but it signifies some type of an emergency. And we pray that all would be well with it. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So, this is the condemnation. We stay in darkness, in evil, separated from God because of unconfessed sin in our lives. Or we come into the light and accept the truth of the gospel what he has given to us. Amen? Amen. Amen. Could you close your eyes and bow your heads? And this is for you that's listening and watching also. The message has been plain and simple. But very powerful, not because it was me, but because it was God's word. Yes. And it says this. This is the condemnation. 
This is what is going to judge you. Whether you accept the light of Jesus Christ or you choose to stay in the darkness that's around you. And it's our choice. It's our choice. And we have to make it. And, and the choice we make in this life is going to determine eternity. I try to tell that to people so many times. But it seems like many times people just want to wait until they get there and see if they're good enough to get in. Believe me, no one will be, able to be good enough to get in without the righteousness of Jesus Christ upon you. The shed blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ upon you. I don't know your hearts, but God does. If you don't know where you would spend eternity if you died today, and this is for those of you that are watching also, you raise your hand. I want to pray for you. No one will know. No one will know but me and you and the Lord. Anyone doesn't know where you would spend eternity if you were to die today. So I'm figuring that every one of us know for sure that we'll be in God's presence the moment we leave this life. Also, God always wants the best for us. Amen? Amen. So if you have a need, something that's causing you difficulty, that you want prayer for, God will know it. I don't need to know it, but God will know it. If you have a need, if you would, if you please raise your hand, I want to pray for you. Anyone else? All around. Anyone else? Anyone else? Father, I pray for all the needs around us. Lord, there are many, so many. Lord, we have a divided country. We have evil that's around us. We have so many that bring the results of their actions upon us. Lord, we pray for all of them. We pray for ourselves, Lord, that we would be faithful to you. Even if others are not faithful to us, we will be faithful to you. And Lord, we pray that if there's anyone that's heard this message from you, from your word today, about the condemnation, that you didn't come to condemn them, but to save them and give them an eternity with you. I pray, Father, that they would ask you now to forgive them of their sin and to accept them as your people, your children. Lord, for all the needs that we saw with the hands raised, I pray for each and every one of those individually that you be with them, that you bring about a good result in the problem, the situation that they're facing. Lord, for all of us, our congregation that's hurting and all of those that may be watching, Lord, there's so many that are going through treatment, so many that are awaiting uh, the results of those tests and so many going through tests and so many uncertainty. And so many of us, even in this place, Father, that are going through difficulties that others may not even know of, but we know that you know of. I pray for them, Lord. Lord, you are the great physician. And Lord, I know that you give wisdom to doctors the medical staffs. And I pray, Lord, for that wisdom to be taken and used for us that you might be glorified in it. Father, we pray for those that have lost loved ones. It hurts, but it's such a, a, a relief, Father, for us to know where they're at. To know that they made that decision. They trusted you as their Lord and Savior. And they are with you now. For your word promises to be absent from this body is to be present with you. Lord, I pray for every family, every individual in this place today. I pray for all of those that are watching. I pray for our country, Lord. There's so much division, so much strife, so much hurt, so much that's going the opposite way that I know you would have for it to go. I pray, Lord, for our leaders. I pray, Father, for those of us that call ourselves Christians, that we would rise up and have our word heard. And I pray, Father, that you would guide us in the words that we use. Lord, lead us and guide us and protect us, and we'll be careful to give you the praise 
for the glory for it all. In Jesus' name we ask it. Amen. Amen. Amen.